Hello, this is Albatross, and today we'll be talking about the demonization of the working class, more specifically, manual labourers and farmers. There is no doubt that these people living in non-metropolitan rural areas have not been the backbone of the American economy since the end of industrialization in America. Ever since the Second Great War, rural areas became smaller and more isolated due to the shrinking employment opportunities and a literal shrinking of size due to suburbanization. All the statistics seem to point that rural workers seem to be struggling to make ends meet, but why are these people constantly voting Republican, a party that has no interests in saving these people from the misery they have been entrapped for more than half a century? The cracks are already showing among the supporter base, many farmers regretting having voted for Trump. However, the point still stands. If you look at a map of the 2016 election map, rural areas are strikingly Republican voting and will continue to do so in the upcoming election this year. Why is this? Due to them being reactionary bigots? No. It is a haunting reminder of how the left has failed in America. Just to make the point clear, I'm not trying to say the Democratic Party is any better. I'm not trying to ask these farmers to vote Democrat, but rather stop voting Republican. 1. Electoral College A popular Democratic talking point is how the Republicans are awarded an unfair amount of representation in the United States. One of the most obvious examples of this happening is Republicans dominating the Pennsylvania State Senate for the last 40 years, despite not always winning the statewide elections. In a grander scale, how Hillary Clinton lost the presidential election despite having more overall votes compared to Donald Trump. This is clearly a problem, and the Democratic Party and many liberals identifying as the moderate left has called to reform the system to be more majoritarian in fashion with Europe, letting the largest district choose the legislators. This sounds like an excellent idea if you are middle class liberal identitarian that can't accept the fact rural America is not willing to accept their paternalism on who to vote for. These liberals don't want to help rural America from its woes. They want them to shut up so they can continue pandering to minorities and regressive policies that do not help the most marginalized and underprivileged group in America, proletariats. Where the mainstream supposed left fails, the mainstream right succeeds. Political scientist Catherine Kramer in her book, The Politics of Resentment, says the main reason why rural voters abstain from voting Democrat or any other party for that matter is because they believe the Democrats and more generally the liberal city dwellers do not understand the situation these rural workers go through. She gives rural Wisconsin as an example. The rural population feeling underrepresented as all the government matters are executed in large city centers such as Madison and Milwaukee. This is a sentiment I can find myself relating to. I do not live in a rural area, but I do live quite far away from the capital, which is where all the governmental structure is located in, as well as the majority of the political candidates. I often find myself feeling polarized and cannot agree with many of the policies these urban politicians push as they do not seem to understand any issues that I face, almost a disproportionate amount of focus on urban issues while rejecting to care for the people outside the bubble. The divide between the rural population and politics is mainly due to economic and population centers also being the political center. Main reason why I do not get why the Democrats or the mainstream social Democrats demonize the rural voter as if they are ruining America's democracy is that these rural voters are also a product and a victim of America's electoral college. They've been forced to vote Republican as the Democratic Party is clearly more focused on the issues urban people face. 
rural workers do not get equal representation with urban workers. In fact, they have even less direct influence as all the activism and political strifes in modern America always exclusively happen in urban regions, which is inevitably affecting the policy of the government. Let us face the truth. Leftists losing in American politics is not due to the rural voters getting too much representation. Rather, the left has forgot its roots, which are based on peasant revolts of the medieval era, especially after the Industrial Revolution, and even more so after deindustrialization of the economy. Farmers and rural workers do not hate left-wing policies or any economic plans that are considered left-wing. What they hate is all the bad faith identity politics from the neoliberals and the demonization and almost patronizing caricature of the rural farmer has polarized the rural voters to sharply turn right as time went. Instead of pushing to render these voters powerless, the left needs to capitalize on these underappreciated proletariat to build a new trust with these people and socialism. This was exploited to an extent by Republicans during the mid-century as it sold itself to voters as a pro-worker party. As Catherine said above, it is not necessarily the bigoted nature of farmers and rural workers, but rather it is a herd mentality lent after they became Republicans. Identity politics are always learned, not inherent. No one is born racist, therefore there is no substantial reason why a person would be racist or bigoted just due to where they're born in. The Republicans managed to convince the working class in rural areas to vote for them and in turn was able to insert the identity politics that the party ran on as politics became less class and economics focused during the turn of the century. The Jackson Sun, a West Tennessee newspaper, writes excellently on this polarization of rural voters facing from Democrats. Yet, national Democrats focus on the problems of minorities and rarely talk about the problems of rural voters. This fact is why identity politics backfires on Democrats. Understandably, Democrats support Black Lives Matter to, re to rectify the historic injustice that is done to African Americans. However, rural voters hear Democrats excluding them from help. When working class whites claim that all lives matter, they are not opposing helping African Americans per se. Instead, they are claiming that working class whites need help and want the help also. If Democrats could broaden their appeal beyond race, spend time in rural areas, and create policies to deliver benefits to these rural areas, Democrats could win more elections. 2. Suffering Economics Another major reason why the rural workers vote Republican is due to its suffering economics. After the recession of 2008, unlike corporations and banks in Wall Street, the rural population and local farms were largely left to die. To take Tennessee as an example, yes, I know, I'm overusing Tennessee here, but it is the only reliable information I could find. Tennessee had 26 distressed and 34 at-risk counties based on poverty, income, and unemployment. All but one of these counties were majority white. You heard that correctly. Poor and white. This was a research conducted in 2013, almost five years after the initial hit. Many poor people in rural America are suffering in extreme poverty to this day. This is why so many rural workers were drawn to Trump in the 2016 election. Although in general the working class are hurt by his acts, the act of bringing back manufacturing to the United States and stabilization of the ever-decreasing coal industry still are much more substantial to these rural communities who have not seen such jobs returning back to America since the Second Great War. Another major reason is immigration. Building the wall, although never done, is a policy that rural workers love. As their poverty rates are higher and their wages lower than in cities, many see illegal immigrants or aliens 
from other nations as competitors that work for lower rate wages, which in turn forces them for forces them to work for less to stay competitive in the job market. As I said multiple times by now, rural America is suffering economically. Poverty rates starting from below 50% the poverty line, 50 to 99% the poverty line, and to 150% the poverty line. Rural Americans consistently have higher rates of poverty than metropolitan areas. This is due to the collapse of American manufacturing and transition to a service economy. Used to be coal miners, loggers, farmers, and manufacturers are now working for Amazon, Walmart, or other service-based jobs. This transition is even more sinister and catastrophic for rural workers. These corporations are much larger and powerful than your local gas stations or local family business and actively crush local competition, causing even more dependency on these corporations. How many times have you seen small towns in America's stores and local businesses going out of business due to the new Walmart or mall in town? Far too many. These large organizations are largely responsible for the death of unions in America also. The transition from manufacturing to service allows the corporations to be less reliant on being in good terms with the workers, which translates to lower pay and worse conditions. There was a saying by CEO of General Motors, Charles Wilson. What was good for the country was good for the company. What does this exactly mean? Well, it shows how General Motors relied on its workers being paid well and living a good life as they were the main customer base. And people of Detroit and largely the entire United States were in poor condition and were not able to afford their vehicles, their company would go bankrupt. Erin Wren argues this is not a case anymore in America. Facebook, Google, and other companies like such do not require a thriving working class throughout America. It has absolutely no reason to care about rural areas outside city centers where its operation is conducted in. As more and more companies transition to service and technology, the prosperity of America has been forced onto city centers while rural areas are left to die as all the jobs are sent overseas in order to make more profit. Rural America are the biggest victim of unrestrained capitalism of the last century and both the Democratic Party and the Republican Party have ignored its woes. When was the last time you heard a Democrat talk about poor white suffering under capitalist oppression in America? Never. However, Nancy Pelosi and the quote-unquote progressive resistance Democrats seem to prize minorities and identitarian movements that ultimately further polarizes the majority of the population outside liberal bubbles in cities. The Democratic Party and American leftists have no one to blame but themselves for rural American counties being majority red, especially in the last election. Democrats love to insult Trump as being a populist, but in reality, that's a compliment. Your policies either facade to get votes or a sincere attempt at saving America from a looming cascade of economic collapse, populism is objectively a good political strategy. Every socialist must remind themselves that real revolutions are found by and won by poor, uneducated workers, but not middle-class intelligentsia. Politics, especially that of identity, is a very middle-class struggle. Poor rural folks don't care about race or any fake issue shoved down by the mainstream media. I remember reading a post on how middle-class Neighborhoods had pickets and posters supporting Black Lives Matter, but the actual neighborhoods filled with minorities didn't have a single poster or picket on Reddit. They want to survive the next week, not be woke. 3. Solidarity Many reasons behind not wanting to engage or cooperate with rural workers in the modern left is this idea that all rural workers are bigoted, racist idiots that do not know any better than to vote Republican every election. This could not be further from the truth. There are between 2.9 million 
and 3.8 million LGBT people living in rural communities, which is about one-fourth the entire LGBT population in America. Interestingly enough, rural America is also the place with the highest number of LGBT parents, according to a data from Williams Institute. This is partly due to the lifestyle many rural workers embrace, a traditional family unit, but also due to lesbian women being able to fit in rural social norms expected a woman, according to Professor Emily Kazak. However, it is true that many rural workers may not share the same values as urban workers do, and undeniably in the past and in the present, this causes division among the working class. I believe the mainstream left has become way overly sensitive with semantics and lack of nuance when dealing with people that do not share the same progressive cultural viewpoint as they do. We must not forget the fact that left-wing movements have always been about the inclusion and solidarity among people that are from different backgrounds uniting for a single class interest, which is the liberation of the working class. Both sides, both liberal and conservative left-wingers, have forgotten the fact this is ultimately why we identify as left-wing. By discluding individuals for not sharing your opinion on a topic unrelated to socialism, or refusing to engage with them to convert them into our movement, has become so intense in the modern era that the right now seems more inclusive than the left. Have you seen how right-wingers are quick to ally themselves with LGBT or ethnic minorities? A main reason why the left is so close-minded is due to a lack of nuance. This is the same kind of behavior as digging up old tweets to pin it against someone. In that case, no socialist was ever a real socialist. Was Lenin a socialist? I'd say so. However, if you put him up to modern liberal standards of cultural and identity politics, he looks to be a conservative bigot. The left lacks historical and or cultural nuance, especially for rural whites. It is both hypocritical and nonsensical to defend religions that are conservative, if not more reactionary than the average rural worker, such as Islam or Judaism, while pinning rural workers to a different standard. We have to convince people to let go of their superstitions and identity politics to create a united front in order to combat capitalism, which is the enemy of all people, no matter skin color, sexuality, or any artificial difference in identity. So please, engage with rural workers, for they are just as oppressed as you are, exploited under the capitalist system, and do not let the modern left become a lapdog for moderate middle class liberals. Conclusion. In conclusion, both sides of the cultural spectrum, per se, we need to compromise on identity-based conflicts in order to unite the working class instead of ignoring, or in worst cases, attacking a certain group due to their cultural bias. I'd like to thank you, all you lads and lasses on Reddit and on YouTube, for helping me reach 100 views on my previous video. It really motivates me to keep making these videos for you. I hope you enjoyed the little gameplay I put in place of my default video format, and before you ask what it is, it's Far Cry 2. If you haven't already, please consider liking the video and subscribe, as I will be making weekly content. This was Albatross, and I'll see you on the next one.